Want to speak real Italian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at italianpod101.com. Hello, ciao! This is Ilaria and welcome to Italian Weekly Words. Today's theme is crossing borders. First word, dogana, customs. I've been stopped at the dogana. Dogana, <coughs> dogana. Al ritorno dal mio viaggio da Roma, sono stata fermata alla dogana. On my way back from Rome, I've been stopped at the customs. Next one, nazionalità, nationality. Conosco molte persone di diverse nazionalità. I know many people of different nationalities. Next one, passaporto, passport. It's very similar to English, passaporto. Ho bisogno di rinnovare il mio passaporto. I need to renew my passport. Next word. Ah, visto. Sorry, I laugh at this one. Next word is visto. Visa. Non hai bisogno. No, hai bisogno. Non hai bisogno. Hai bisogno. Hai bisogno. Per visitare alcuni paesi hai bisogno di un visto turistico. To visit some countries you need a tourist visa. Carta d'ingresso. Entry card. Quando arrivi in un paese straniero, ottieni la carta d'ingresso. When you arrive to a foreign country, you obtain the entry card. Fine. The end. We're done for today. See you next time. I hope you enjoyed it and bye bye. Ciao. Ci vediamo. See you. Welcome to ItalianPod101.com's Italiano in 3 Minuti, the fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Italian. Ciao, sono Consuelo, piacere. Hi, I'm Consuelo, nice to meet you. I've just introduced myself in Italian. In this lesson, you are going to learn how to introduce yourself in Italian. There are only two sentences to do it, but first, it is important to clarify that in Italian there's a difference between formal and informal speech. Let's now see how Italians introduce themselves in an informal situation, referring to tu, Italian for you. Ciao, sono Consuelo, piacere di conoscerti. Hi, I'm Consuelo, nice to meet you. Ciao, sono Consuelo. Piacere di conoscerti. So, you just need to say Ciao. Sono, add your name, and then Piacere di conoscerti. Ciao, sono Consuelo. Piacere di conoscerti. And now, let's see the same sentence during a formal situation, referring to lei, the Italian courtesy form, for you. Buongiorno, sono Consuelo Innocenti. Piacere di conoscerla. Buongiorno, sono Consuelo Innocenti. Piacere di conoscerla. What has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a look at this. Ciao has been substituted with the formal greeting buongiorno. Italian for good morning. Sono Consuelo has not been changed. Sono stands in both cases for I am. However, during a formal self-introduction, we also say our last name. Consuelo Innocenti are respectively my first and last names. Finally, the sentence piacere di conoscerla has switched conoscerti into conoscerla, since conoscerla is referred to lei, the Italian formal courtesy form for you. So, the formal way to introduce yourself is Buongiorno, sono, here add your full name, and then Piacere di conoscerla. Buongiorno, sono Consuelo Innocenti, piacere di conoscerla. If you use the correct sentence with Italians, they are definitely going to be impressed. So, ciao, sono Consuelo, piacere. Hi guys, I'm Desiree, and today we're gonna check together the 10 questions that you should know. Come stai? How are you? 
In a basic conversation, this would be maybe the first question that people ask you. For example, ciao, come stai? Ciao, bene, tu? Hi, how are you? Fine, thanks, you? Cosa hai detto? What did you say? This is a useful question. You can also add, can you repeat, please? Puoi ripetere, per favore? If you say this in a bad way, like, che cosa hai detto? What did you say? Che cosa hai detto su di me? What did you say about me? It can also be a starting point for a discussion, for an argument. Just go with the plain tone. Cosa hai detto? Puoi ripetere? That's why I advise you to add Puoi ripetere per favore? Can you repeat, please? Di dove sei? Where are you from? I'm from Italy. Sono italiana. This is a question that usually refers to your country, to your nationality. Dov'è il bagno? Where is the bathroom? You can use this question with everything you need to know, the place of. For example, dov'è la cucina? Where is the kitchen? Dov'è l'ufficio? Where is the office? Dov'è la scuola? Where is the school? Just put the place that you need to know about after dove è. You can also say, you can also put a street name. Dove è Via della Francia, for example. Dove abiti? Where do you live? This is more specific than di dove sei. For example, when you already know where the person you're talking to comes from, you can add dove abiti. For example, I live in Turin. Io abito a Torino. By the way, if you don't know it, it's a city in the north of Italy. Like here. Dove abiti can also refer to what kind of house do you have? Like, are you living in an apartment, or a mansion, or a house? Yeah, you can ask this question with dove abiti. Dove lavori? Where do you work? It's another easy question that people would ask you when you're talking about yourself. And you can answer, io lavoro all'aeroporto. I work at the airport, for example. Or I work at the supermarket. Lavoro al supermercato. Che lavoro fai? What kind of work do you do? What is your job? Another question that would come together with dove lavori can be che lavoro fai? What job do you do? What's your job? Qual è il tuo lavoro? Quanti anni hai? How old are you? As I said in another video, in Italian you don't answer I am 20, sono 20 anni, but you say I have 20 years old, io ho 20 anni. Dove hai imparato l'italiano? Where did you learn Italian? Ho imparato l'italiano a scuola. I learned Italian at school. I learned Italian by myself. Ho imparato l'italiano da solo. Another question that would come together with dove hai imparato l'italiano or another way of asking this would be come hai imparato l'italiano? How did you learn Italian? And you can answer, for example, I learned Italian listening to songs. Ho imparato l'italiano ascoltando canzoni. If you manage, that's great for you. Bravo. Ti piace la cucina italiana? Do you like Italian food? For example, lasagne, pizza, gelato. I can go on forever, but I will stop here. And tell you that another question that will come for for sure is qual è il tuo piatto italiano preferito? What is your favorite Italian dish? That was the last of our 10 questions you should know. Please let me know if you have other questions you would like to know about and remember to subscribe. Bye bye. Ciao ciao. Want to speak real Italian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at italianpod101.com. Ciao a tutti, sono Consuelo. Hi everybody, I'm Consuelo and welcome back to italianpod101.com's Italiano in 3 minuti, the fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Italian. In the last lesson, we learned how to be grateful saying grazie. Today, we learn some of the most common greetings used in Italy. Pronti? Are you ready? Allora, cominciamo! Let's start! The most used informal greeting is Ciao! Ciao! Ciao means hi, hello, and goodbye. That's why we use it when we meet, but also when we leave. We should only use this greeting with relatives or friends. 
And now, let's talk about some more formal greetings. The one you're used to hear in Italy and at italianpod101.com is buongiorno. Buongiorno. Literally, buongiorno means good day. However, we could also interpret it as good morning or good afternoon. As a rule of thumb, we can use buongiorno only during the daytime from morning until evening. During the evening, we say buonasera. Buonasera. So, since sera obviously means evening, buonasera stands for good evening. Buongiorno and buonasera are used when we meet someone, but when we leave, we don't say them again. In this formal situation, Italians use arrivederci. Arrivederci. Arrivederci means goodbye. Finally, in Italian, we use the expression meaning see you soon that can be considered both formal and informal. That is, a presto. A presto. Now, you can greet people in many different ways in Italian. Ciao. Ciao. Buongiorno. Buonasera. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. A presto. A presto. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Consuelo's tips. In formal situations, Italians commonly greet one another by shaking hands. On the other hand, if we meet someone we are very friendly with, we kiss each other on the cheek. Don't be afraid to do it with your Italian friends. It's normal. Ciao! Ciao! In the next lesson, we learn the meaning of the phrase Parla inglese? Do you already know it? We'll be waiting for you in our next Italiano in 3 Minuti lesson. Ciao, a presto, alla prossima lezione. Hi guys, welcome to italianpod101.com. My name is Ilaria, nice to meet you. And today we are going to talk about the 20 travel phrases you should know. So something quite usual if it happens that, for instance, you are going to travel in my country, in Italy. So let's start. Potrei avere una mappa? Could I get a map? Potrei avere una mappa? Could I get a map? is actually something really useful, especially if you find yourself in a situation where you don't know where you are and you want to ask someone help. Let's say you're going to a local shop and you say, potrei avere una mappa? Parla inglese? Do you speak English? Another useful phrase is, parla inglese? Do you speak English? This is something really, really useful when you are abroad and, and you want to know if someone speaks English and you say, parla inglese? C'è un autobus dall'aeroporto alla città? Is there a bus from the airport to the city? C'è un autobus dall'aeroporto alla città? Is there a bus from the airport to the city? This is specifically from the airport to the city. So, dall'aeroporto alla città, from the airport to the city. Dov'è la stazione? Where is the train station? Dov'è la stazione? Where is the train station? So in this case, uh, dove la stazione is a bit generic in Italian because you can say where is the train station, which is dove la stazione dei treni, but you can also say dove la, stra- dove la stazione del bus, where is the autobus station, you know. You should be like specific because people they might ask you which station are you looking for, train station or bus station, because they are quite different. Sometimes they are in different places in Italy. Mi scusi, qual è la tariffa? Excuse me, what's the fare? Mi scusi, qual è la tariffa? Excuse me, what's the fare? You can also say, mi scusi, quanto costa? È questo l'autobus giusto per l'aeroporto? Is this the right bus for the airport? È questo l'autobus giusto per l'aeroporto? Is this the right bus for the airport? You can also say this with trains, with any kind of public transport really, you know? And also, è questo il treno giusto per l'aeroporto? La connessione wifi è gratuita? Is the Wi-Fi free? La connessione Wi-Fi è gratuita? Is the Wi-Fi free? 
then you can check your maps, you know, watch for public transport yourself, you know. Uh, you can also say, avete Wi-Fi, which is actually pretty much the same, they will understand what you're talking about. Ha qualche posto libero per stasera? Do you have any vacancies tonight? Ha qualche posto libero per stasera? Do you have any vacancies tonight? In this case, you are talking about hotel rooms or, uh, you know, any kind of um, place where you can spend the night, where you are abroad as, a, as an hotel or a B&B or an apartment, you know. And you can actually say, avete qualche posto libero? Potrei spostarmi in una camera diversa? Could I move to a different room? Potrei spostarmi in una camera diversa? Could I move to a different room? So let's say you, you just find an hotel, but they give you like a, a very small room and you need more things and you can just say, avete un'altra camera? You know, they will understand that you want to change your room, basically. Ho prenotato. I have a reservation. Ho prenotato. I have a reservation. So basically when you say ho prenotato means that you have booked. Potremmo avere il menu, per favore? Could we have the menu, please? So this is about the food. In English you say, could we have the menu, please? And so in Italian you say, potremmo avere il menu, per favore? Potremmo, if you are like loads of people, but if you are by yourself, you say, potrei avere il menu, per favore? And they will understand exactly what you're talking about. Potrei avere il conto? Could I have the check? Potrei avere il conto? Could I have the check? The check is the bill. You finish to eat and you want to know how much your, 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 the amount, I mean, uh, that you have to pay for. So you say, potrei avere il conto, per favore? Sono allergico alle arachidi. I am allergic to peanuts. Sono allergico alle arachidi. I am allergic to peanuts. This is very important, especially if you're allergic to some food, to avoid any problems when you are around for your holidays, you know? And this is actually a very good example when you say, sono allergico. Allergico means that you have an allergy, so you are not able to get this food. So, sono allergico alle arachidi. Sono allergico al gluten, which means like, I'm allergic to gluten, for instance, you know? And so on. Acqua, per favore. Water, please. Acqua, per favore. Water, please. Quanto costa? How much is this? Quanto costa? How much is this? Also, you can say, mi potrebbe dire quanto costa, per favore, which means like, could I, could I know how much is that, please, you know? Ne vorrei dieci di questi. I'd like ten of these. Ne vorrei dieci di questi. I'd like ten of these which is like, um, let's say you, 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 you sow something and you want to know just the quantity, you want more than one, you know, and you say, ne vorrei, ne vorrei uno, like I want one, ne vorrei due, I want two, and so on, you know, and let's say in this case, it's, ne vorrei dieci. Vorrei questo. I'd like this. Vorrei questo. There is just one particular thing that just grab your attention and you say, I want this. Vorrei questo. Potrebbe farmi uno sconto? Could you give me a discount? Potrebbe farmi uno sconto? Could you give me a discount? So this is quite important, especially if you, if you get around quite often and you want to have discounts on things. Let's say you, wanna buy, you, you buy like a bunch of things and you want a discount from the seller and you say, posso avere lo sconto per favore? Accettate le carte di credito? Do you take credit card? Accettate la carta di credito? Do you take credit card? Potrebbe farmi una foto, per favore? Could you take a picture of me, please? Potrebbe farmi una foto, per favore? Could you take a picture of me, please? That might be happening, you know, you are in front of a very important monument and you want someone to make a photo of you. And then you say, Potrebbe farmi una foto, per favore? With this nice question, we actually reached the end of our lesson, guys. Thanks very much for uh, listening to us, as usual. Please watch us, comment, subscribe and give us some tips about what you want to know next in our lovely Italian language. From italianpod101.com, that's it. Thanks very much for listening and take care. Bye-bye. Have a nice day, guys. Bye-bye. Ciao a tutti, sono Consuelo. Hi, everybody, I'm Consuelo and welcome back to italianpod101.com's Italiano in 3 Minuti the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Italian.
In the last lesson, we learned the most common forms of greetings in Italian. We talked about greetings like ciao, buongiorno, buonasera, and so on. Today, we are going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? Using this phrase as opposed to speaking English to someone is important for many reasons. For one, if the person you're speaking to doesn't understand English, at least they'll be able to understand what you're saying. Furthermore, that you've made an effort to learn even a little bit of the language shows a lot of respect on your part. So, for these reasons and many more, we are going to cover this very important phrase. Are you ready? Allora, cominciamo! So, let's start! Now, here's the informal way to say it. Parli inglese? Parli inglese? In this sentence, the verb parlare, to speak, is inflected in the second singular person, tu. You can easily recognize it from the ending part of the verb parli. To learn how to properly conjugate are verbs like parlare at the present indicative, please look at our Absolute Beginner series. You can find very detailed grammar lessons if you check upon italianpod101.com. But now let's go back to parli inglese. Inglese is the adjective that means English. When asking the question, do you speak English in a formal situation, you should switch the verb parlare into the third singular person, lei. The result is parla inglese. This sentence could be very helpful if you are in trouble on the streets, in a restaurant, at a hotel. No matter where you are, whenever you need to talk to an English speaker, just ask parla inglese. Adding scusi, excuse me, the sentence becomes more polite. Scusi, parla inglese? Scusi, parla inglese? The responses you will receive could be basically one of these three. Sì. Sì. Si. Un po'. Un po'. No. Non parlo inglese. No, non parlo inglese. Since this last one is a negative statement, we should say non before the verb. With io, Italian for I, the verb changes into parlo. That is why I do not speak is non parlo. Non parlo. Now it's time for Consuelo's tips. For those of you who are not only English speakers, you can obviously use this question with any language you need. Italians study other European languages at school, so maybe you get lucky. Just substitute inglese with francese for French, spagnolo for Spanish, and tedesco for German. In today's lesson, we mentioned scusi. In the next lesson, we learn this and other ways to apologize in Italian. It's never too late to show your good manners with Italian people. I'll see you in our next Italiano in 3 Minuti lesson. Ciao! Alla prossima lezione! Hi guys! Welcome to italianpod101.com. My name is Ilaria. Nice to see you or nice to meet you again. Today we are going to talk about the top 10 must-know vocabulary for the restaurant. It's actually a very important topic especially if you get to Italy uh, for your holiday or for uh, business travel, uh, wherever it is really, you know. So let's start. Cameriere. Waiter. Cameriere. Waiter. Non riesco a vedere il cameriere. Dov'è? I can't see the waiter. Where is he? Or you can also say, Dove è il cameriere? Where is the waiter? Cameriera. Waitress. Cameriera. Waitress. Quella cameriera è molto gentile. That waitress is very nice. Waiter is male and waitress is female. So, waiter is cameriere and waitress is cameriera. Menu. Menu. 
Menu. Menu. Posso avere il menu, per favore? Can I have the menu, please? So basically, it just changed the accent because in English you say menu and in Italian you say menu. It's like a bit of a French word. Ordine. Order. Ordine. Order. I signori sono pronti per l'ordine? Are you ready to order, gentlemen? So this is a typical phrase that waiter or waitress can ask you when you are in Italy. Are you ready for a uh, order? Um, are you ready to order? Sorry. Or they can also say, if you are like a lot of people, uh, the waitress or the waiter can also say, um, siete pronti per l'ordine? That means like, are you ready to order without the gentleman? Like, you know, they, they usually say, siete pronti per ordinare? Are you ready to order? Acqua. Water. Acqua. Water. Vorrei una bottiglia di acqua frizzante. I'd like a bottle of sparkling water. So, acqua frizzante is sparkling water. Acqua naturale is mineral water. Dolce. Dessert. Dolce. Dessert. Non voglio esagerare mangiando anche il dolce. I don't want to overdo it by having a dessert too. You can also use dessert in Italian as well. Uh, uh, let's say, if you would like to know uh, which kind of desserts they have in a restaurant, you can say Quali dolci avete? Which kind of desserts you have? Cuoco. Chef. Cuoco. Chef. Il cuoco oggi si è superato. The chef out, outdid it himself today which means that he make like a spectacular dinner or lunch or, you know, he, does, he did prepare an, expect, an amazing food, you know. And you can also use the word chef in Italian as well. Fast food. Fast food. Fast food. Fast food. In Italia si preferisce lo slow food al fast food. In Italy, we, uh, we prefer, I can say, slow food to fast food. And that's actually very true. <laughs> or you can also say, um, le persone in Italia non amano il fast food. Like people in Italy don't love fast food, you know. Ristorante. Restaurant. Ristorante. Restaurant. Questo ristorante ha ricevuto molte stelle. This restaurant has been given many stars. So that means that if you go to, to eat something in that restaurant, you should like eat a proper food, like a very quality, high quality food. Delizioso. Delicious. Delizioso. Delicious. Le lasagne alla bolognese erano deliziose. The lasagna alla bolognese was delicious. With this nice sentence, we actually reached the end of our lesson, guys. Uh, thanks very much as usual for listening. Please comment, subscribe, tell us what you want to hear in our, in our amazing, nice Italian language. I'm a bit lost in translation today, by the way. So thanks very much. We will talk soon. Take care, always. Bye bye from italianpod101.com. Ilaria, ciao. Ciao a tutti, sono Consuelo. Hi everybody, I'm Consuelo. Welcome back to italianpod101.com. Italiano in 3 minuti, the fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Italian. In the last lesson, we learned some words used when apologizing in Italian, including scusi and mi dispiace. Today, we are going to learn numbers. Are you ready? Allora, cominciamo! So, let's start! Uno, due, tre. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Ok, now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
7, 8, 9, 10. Great job! What is before uno? Do you know? It's the same as in English, but with a different pronunciation. Zero. Zero. You don't have any more excuses. You can give your friends your mobile number in Italian. Let's try together. Il mio numero è 337 122 49 68. Can you read it by yourself? 337 122 49 68. Now it's time for Consuelo's tips. When we buy groceries in Italy in shops or supermarkets, we usually have to stand in line with a number. When it's your turn to check out, they scream numero uno, numero dieci, and so on. You must be ready. In the next lesson, we are going to learn the numbers from 10 to 100. Your task now is to practice the numbers we studied in this lesson. From uno to dieci. Tre, due, uno, via! Three, two, one, go! We'll be waiting for you in our next Italiano in tre minuti lesson. Ciao! Alla prossima lezione! Want to speak real Italian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at italianpod101.com. Hi guys, I'm Desiree and today we're going to do the top 25 Italian phrases that means useful words in Italian. Ciao! Hello! Ciao is the first word and it's a really useful word because you can use that to your friends to say ciao, ciao, but not to people that you don't really know. Buongiorno. Good morning. Buongiorno, that means good morning, and you can use it with friends or even with people that you don't know. So, buongiorno, buongiorno, and people can even answer to you back, ciao, that it's okay, but use buongiorno with everyone and you will be safe. Buonanotte, good night. Buonanotte, so good night. You can use it, of course, in the night, but it's a word that we don't really use to people that we don't know, so it's like ciao. If people say to you, ciao, to say bye, you can answer buonanotte, but just if you know that they're really going to bed, otherwise it's good evening, so buonasera. Sono desire. I'm desire. Sono, that means I am. You can use it with your nationality, so I'm Italian, sono italiana, or with your name, I'm desire, sono desire. Mi chiamo desire. My name is desire. Mi chiamo Desiree means my name is Desiree, and you can use that to introduce yourself to people that you may know or that you don't know. It's okay because it's formal and informal at the same time. It's okay. Mi chiamo Desiree. Come ti chiami? What's your name? Come ti chiami? So, what's your name? Mi chiamo Desiree. Tu come ti chiami? Piacere di conoscerti. Nice to meet you. You will always use piacere di conoscerti. Come stai? How are you? Come stai? That means how are you? But it's something that you use with your friends, not really with people that you don't know, because in that case it would be something like come sta? Bene, grazie. E tu? I'm fine, thanks. And you? Bene, grazie. E tu? That means fine, thanks. And you? Per favore. Please. Then we have a really useful word that is per favore, that means please. So you can put it at the end of any phrase and it will give you a nice way of asking. Even if you don't know how, how to say may or can, just add per favore and it will help you. Grazie. Thank you. And to say thank you, you will say grazie. Grazie. Prego. You're welcome. And to answer you're welcome, you have prego. So if you ask something and add per favore at the end, and then the people will do something, you can say grazie, and the other one will answer prego. Sì. Si. Yes. Sì, si, that means yes. Of course, it's really useful because vuoi mangiare qualcosa? Would you like something to eat? Sì. Si. Yes. No. No. And if you manage to say no, because it's hard to say no to an Italian offering you some food, 
then you can say no. But it's the same Italian and English, no. Va bene. Okay. Then we have va bene, that means okay. So again, when people ask you, do you want this? You can say va bene, so it's okay. Scusi. Excuse me. Scusi, that means excuse me. But to people that you don't really know, so it would be like, excuse me, do you know where, th where the station is? Scusa, sai dove è la stazione? Scusa. I'm sorry. If you know the people you're talking to, you should use scusa, that means I'm sorry. Che ora è? What time is it? Che ora è? That means what time is it? You can use it in a formal or informal way, it's the same, so you can say scusa, che ora è? Or scusi, che ora è? It's the same. Dove è la stazione? Where is the station? When you want to know where some place is, so where is location, you will say dove è la stazione, that is, for example, the station. Posso usare il bagno? May I use the restroom? When you need to ask permission for something, you will use the word posso, that means can I? So in this case, posso usare il bagno? Can I use the toilet? And I would add please, so per favore, and the answer would be yes, sure, sì, prego, grazie. Vorrei qualcosa da mangiare. I would like something to eat. When you need something, you can use the word vorrei, that means I would like to. So vorrei mangiare, I would like to eat. Vorrei bere, I would like to drink. Vorrei dormire, I would like to sleep. Uh, we can go on forever, but still, vorrei, and then add the verb that you need. Posso avere il conto? Can I get the check? When you finish to eat and you want to check, you can say, posso avere il conto? That means, can I have the check? And if you want to be more polite, you can say, posso avere il conto, per favore? That means, can I have the check, please? A presto. See you soon. When you say bye to your friends and you don't really know when you're going to meet them again, you will say, a presto. That means, see you soon. A dopo. See you later. If you know that you're going to meet them later on, you can say a dopo, that means see you later. Dove posso mangiare la pizza? That means where can I eat a pizza? If you really no want to know where you can eat a good pizza, you can add buon, that means good. So it will be dove posso mangiare una buona pizza? Of course, you cannot use pizza, but another type of food that you really want to eat. And that would be maybe lasagna or maybe gelato. So you can say, dove posso mangiare un buon gelato? Or, dove posso mangiare una buona lasagna? We learned how to ask, how are you? And to answer, I'm fine, thanks. But what about if you're not really fine? So you can say, così così, that means more or less, or male, that means bad, really bad. Guys, that's it for today. We finished the top 25 Italian phrases. And which one was your favorite one? Mine is mm, così così, that if you remember means mm, not so well. But anyway, remember to subscribe. Bye bye. Ci vediamo. People, what, what, that, that, that. Hey, to introduce... To... Ciao a tutti, sono Consuelo. Hi everybody, I'm Consuelo. And welcome back to ItalianPod101.com's Italiano in 3 minuti the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Italian. In the last lesson, we learned how to count in Italian. I hope you spent enough time practicing the numbers. They will be useful for this lesson because we are going to learn how to ask how much is it? The phrase how much is it is quanto costa? Quanto costa? Are you ready for some unchecked shopping in Italy? Let's practice together. The first thing to say to a shop clerk is Scusi. Do you remember what that means? Excuse me. So, Scusi, quanto costa? Scusi, quanto costa? If we want to be more specific when asking how much is this, we should add questo when referring to a masculine object or questa when referring to a feminine object. Quanto costa questo? Quanto costa questa? For example, hat is a masculine noun. Cappello. Scusi, quanto costa questo cappello?
And what about feminine nouns? Skirt in Italian is feminine. Gonna. So, scusi, quanto costa questa gonna? At this point, the shop clerk can answer by saying Costa bla bla bla. Sono bla bla bla. Fanno bla bla bla. For example, Sono 39 euro. Fanno 39 euro. Or Costa 39 euro. What number is 39? I'm not telling you. Okay, okay, it's 39. It costs 39 euros. Now it's time for Consuelo's tips. A quicker way to ask how much is quant'è, which literally means how much is. Even when you ask for an espresso at the counter of an Italian bar, you can ask the cashier, un espresso, per favore. Quant'è? One espresso, please. How much is it? So, don't forget that Italian streets are full of stands. And in most little towns, you can easily find local markets with many stands where you can buy absolutely everything. At this point, can you count euros in Italian? We are going to learn how to do this and much more in the next lesson. We'll be waiting for you in our next Italiano in 3 Minuti lesson. Ciao, alla prossima lezione! Hi guys, welcome to italianpod101.com. My name is Ilaria, nice to see you or nice to meet you. Um, today we are going to talk about travel. So the top 10 ways to prepare your travel. Of course, in my language, in Italian. So let's start. Scegliere la tua destinazione. To choose your destination. Scegliere la tua destinazione. To choose your destination. Io e le mie amiche abbiamo scelto la nostra destinazione per il prossimo viaggio. My friends and I choose our destination for the next trip. I love to travel with my girlfriends and it is just one of the best thing ever. You know, and I like to organize. I, I maybe like more to organize than, than, you know, the travel itself or this kind of feeling that you're getting ready, you know, to go somewhere new uh, with your friends, you know. Risparmiare denaro. To save money. Risparmiare denaro. To save money. Per il viaggio dei miei sogni ho bisogno di risparmiare denaro. For my dream trip, I need to save money. Of course, I mean, you need money to travel. You can also do some very nice um, voluntary travel and uh, um, so you don't have to like to spend lots of money, but you still do something really nice for the other people. You know what I mean? Prenotare un volo. To book a flight. Prenotare un volo. To book a flight. Hai già prenotato il volo del ritorno? Have you already booked your return flight? You can also say, um, if you need to book a flight, for instance, you know. Devo prenotare un volo. I have to book for a flight. Devo prenotare un volo. And then you can say your destination, for instance, Rome. Devo prenotare un volo per Roma. Fare una ricerca sui prezzi. To research the costs. Fare una ricerca sui prezzi. To research the costs. Mio marito ha fatto una curata ricerca sui prezzi londinesi. My husband has carefully researched the costs in London. Uh, you can actually uh, also save money uh, if you get to know, uh, you, you just research places and things, you know, uh, use vouchers and things like that. I mean, discounts, you know, um, you can easily uh, spend less money uh, if you try to research for the best costs, you know, the best offers, basically. Chiedere le ferie. To request vacation time. Chiedere le ferie. To request vacation time. Non si può partire senza chiedere le ferie in, in anticipo. We can't leave without requesting vacation time in advance. Chiedere le ferie, ferie, is the word that defines the holiday time, ferie. Prenotare la sistemazione, to book accommodations. Prenotare la sistemazione, to book accommodations. Se viaggio con i bambini è fondamentale prenotare la giusta sistemazione. 
if I travel with children, it is essential to book the right accommodation. If you are parents, I bet you did that. Ottenere una patente di guida internazionale. To obtain an international driving license. Ottenere una patente di guida internazionale. To obtain an international driving license. Non so ancora come ottenere la patente di guida internazionale. I still don't know how to obtain an international driving license. You can, actually, I think that you can, um, in uh, um, uh, European countries, you can use the same one. Uh, but of course, if you want to drive outside Europe, you might need an international driving license. Rinnovare il tuo passaporto. To renew your passport. Rinnovare il tuo passaporto. To renew your passport. Hai rinnovato il tuo passaporto per andare in Asia? Have you renewed your passport to go to Asia? Be careful about this detail. Acquistare l'assicurazione di viaggio. To buy travel insurance. Acquistare l'assicurazione di viaggio. To buy travel insurance. Non dimenticate di acquistare l'assicurazione di viaggio, ragazzi. Don't forget to buy travel insurance, guys. If you're especially going for a long trip, um, many also travel agencies, they suggest you to do something like that because you are covered in case of any kind of uh, thing happening, you know. So bear in mind this point. Ottenere un visto. To get a visa. Ottenere un visto. To get a visa. I cittadini europei non hanno bisogno di ottenere un visto per spostarsi in Europa. European citizens don't need to get a visa to move in Europe. That's the reason why I told you before about driving license. I don't think that is necessary uh, in Europe itself. Oh, outside Europe, of course. Um, so anyway, but you, you'll ask anyway. I mean, when you actually book a travel, you, you might know exactly if you need a visa to get to that place or not. So I hope these kind of uh, sentences, they were useful to you guys. Uh, and now we actually re- reach the end of our lesson on italianpod101.com. Here is Ilaria. Thanks again for listening. Please subscribe, comment, tell us what you want to hear in, a, in, a, in our nice Italian language. And I thank you uh, very much again. Take care always. Bye, guys. Bye bye. Hi, guys. Ciao, ragazzi. I'm Desiree, and today we're going to learn together 10 lines you need for introducing yourself. Ho studiato l'italiano per un anno. I've been learning Italian for a year. Ho studiato l'italiano per... I've been learning Italian for... And then you add the time you've been learning Italian for. For example, you can say... Ho studiato l'italiano per un anno. I've been learning Italian for one year. Or... In my case, for English, would be Ho studiato l'inglese per otto anni. I've been learning English for eight years. Il mio nome è Desiree. My name is Desiree. Il mio nome è... My name is... In my case, of course, my name is Desiree. Il mio nome è Desiree. You can just add your name. You can also say Mi chiamo. It, it means I'm called. So, yeah, I'm, Mi chiamo Desiree. I'm called Desiree. Ciao, è un piacere conoscerti. Hello, it's nice to meet you. Ciao, è un piacere conoscerti. Hi, it's nice to meet you. When, for example, you are inside a big group and you go like one by one introducing yourself, maybe you don't say every time è un piacere conoscerti, but you just say piacere, pleasure. And it's okay, it's nice. Vengo dall'Italia. I'm from Italy. Vengo da means I'm from, for example, I'm from Italy, vengo dall'Italia, I'm from Dubai, vengo da Dubai, so vengo da, you can put the country name or the city place, it's the same. Vivo a Roma, I live in Rome. Vivo a, I live in, vivo a Torino, I live in Turin, vivo a Roma, I live in Rome, I live in New York, vivo a New York. If you want to say the country, just put in. If you want to put the city, it's a. Vivo a Torino, vivo in Italia. Sono insegnante. I'm a teacher. Sono, and then you say your profession. I'm, when you're talking about your job, for example, sono insegnante, I'm a teacher, or sono 
un pescatore, I'm a fisher, fisherman. Anyway, sono, that means I am. It's the way to say what you're doing as a job, too. So you just say I am and then your profession. Ho 22 anni. I am 22 years old. Ho 22 anni. Ho numero anni. So I'm number years. I'm 22 years old. Io ho 22 anni. In Italian we don't say I am but I have. So io ho means I have and then you put your number of years. So io ho 22 anni means I'm 22 years old but literally is I have. Mi piace ascoltare la musica. I enjoy listening to music. Mi piace, I enjoy, I like. For example, mi piace ascoltare la musica. I like listening to music. Mi piace leggere libri. I like reading books. Or mi piace molto mangiare. I enjoy eating a lot. Uno dei miei hobby è la lettura. One of my hobbies is reading. One of my hobby is reading. Uno dei miei hobby è la lettura. But you can also say uno dei miei hobby è leggere. So leggere with the verb or lettura is the noun. You can put both after one of my hobby is. Uno dei miei hobby è. Sto imparando l'italiano su italianpod101.com. I'm learning Italian at italianpod101.com. Sto imparando l'italiano con Desiree. I'm learning Italian with Desiree. Sto imparando l'italiano da solo. I'm learning Italian by myself. Or sto imparando l'italiano attraverso la televisione. I'm learning Italian through television. I'm learning Italian listening to music. Sto imparando l'italiano ascoltando canzoni. Oh, great, that's a great way to do that. That was the 10 of lines you need for introducing yourself. I hope you enjoyed and you found it useful. Thank you for all your comments. I'll read every of them and I'm happy I can be useful for you to learn Italian somehow. I hope this video helped you too. So comment if you want to and remember to subscribe. Bye bye.